Hi guys, welcome back to Points of Interest. Um, I am here today with Roy Cronaker, game designer. Hey everyone. And I know it's not fair to say that you created it single-handedly, <laughs> but The Revenant's yeah. kind of your baby. Yeah, kind of. A lot of people put in a lot of work, but I've been overseeing a lot of that stuff too, so. Yeah, so you've done quite a bit on that. We've been talking about Shiro a lot this week. Yeah, um, pretty exciting. I know it is. It's been really neat to watch this class, this new class, kind of grow and evolve. Um, last week we talked to you guys. Colin and I chatted a little bit about how we're doing testing on the Revenant and all of Heart of Thorns, and how we're getting back to the true meaning of beta testing, which means that we're we're really listening to your guys' feedback and when you're testing, it's not just solely a marketing event and not just, hey, here's a free preview of this finished, completely balanced and ready to go game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Roy's we like, can't oh get God. it perfect <laughs> right away. I mean, yeah. things take time and your feedback definitely helps a lot with the whole process. Yeah, so last week was the Revenant and Stronghold preview. Um, and I know you didn't work on strongholds. Roy's like, please don't make me talk about that. <laughs> okay. um, but you did have a lot to work on with The Revenant because yeah. we really did listen to what you guys had to say. So we have, you've had a lot to do this week. Um, yeah. Let's start, well, first, a lot of people have been asking about underwater weapons. Why, Roy? Why won't you <laughs> let us have them, Roy? Why? Um, they're still in development, mostly. Um, they're still just further like behind in the process compared to the other stuff we've been showing off. So it's something we're working on. We're working on converting some of the legends to also work underwater properly, things like that. So it's something we're still developing and you'll see um, in one of the future tests, but just not right now. Yeah, it's just, again, not a completed game. <laughs> so you're working on it. Yeah, yeah we're working on it and you guys will see it sometime, but yeah, we'll probably have a post about it or something um, explaining awesome. all the things for Revenant underwater. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so let's see, you also had, but in the meantime, you had a lot of feedback to deal yeah. with. So we had a like ton. Mason Axe on the Malik's legend. I'm sorry. Okay, well, just in general, like we had a lot of feedback from the forums, like you guys posting on the new like Revenant um, sub forum helped a lot. A lot of points just from playtesting. This last weekend and internal playtests, we got a bunch of different feedback and we're taking this chance to address some of it um, as well. So like Mace Axe and Malix um, specifically, we felt like we agreed with you guys where the condition output was a little bit too low. Um, so we upped a lot of the conditions, like example would be putting a Torment on the Mace 3, for example. So when you hit, it applies Torment as well, um, upping Torment on Axe 5, as well as upping the burn duration on um, the 2 for Mace, as well as Steering Fisher. Nice. <clears throat> Let's see. Um... Then, like, um, basically a general thing we got was, like, the Revenant feels a bit too slow in its current iteration that you guys played, and we thought that was a fair, like, um, assessment. So basically we went through and tuned down a bunch of the cast times to feel more fluid like when you're playing the profession. Like for example, a bigger one was um, we made legend swapping instant by default now. So instead Yay. of having like that cast time, you can now do that while doing other things like attacking with your weapon. And it should create um, a better like flow and like pacing in combat for your character. Just feel a little bit less um, sluggish Along with that, like we had a bug as well where um, if you took the invocation trait line, skill queuing was broken on the Revenant, which also added to the slowness feel because like your skills weren't queued properly behind like each other, so it'd feel a little bit less responsive. So fixing things like that will help with that problem as well. Thank you. I think I join <laughs> everybody in saying thank you. Yeah. So we have um, a big list of changes. Um, it's about like a page and a half or so of changes um, based on feedback and things like that. Yeah, so that was, a lot of that is down to you guys and just the feedback that you guys gave after hammering that for a while. Um, so there's another one that we kind of want to show off, right? Um, yeah. Mark, can you kind of help us show what the other one is? Oh man, what's that? Look at that! So a lot of the feedback <laughs> we got this was something we were actually testing internally before, but it wasn't ready. Um, and your guys' feedback kind of helped push it over the line for like 
pushing it out. Basically, we added weapon swap to Yay. Revenant. Um, some big contributing factors to that was felt kind of awkward being locked into like melee or range, especially when fights and PvE and PvP. Totally. Like most professions, you can switch between melee and range pretty easily, and um, it feels a lot more fluid that way. So this will give you that option. Also, the fact that Legends had multiple play styles, like Jalus was your more like tanky setup, um, Shiro is going to be the DPS setup, things like that. So it didn't really feel good to have the weapons which are more focused, like uh, Mace Axe or like a condition weapon set, but then you're locked into like a tanky play style and Malix. And we'd rather have you have the option to like match the playstyle of your legend with your weapons and like mix and match. Then you can do cool things like swap around and have the dual nature of like you can swap with legends or you can swap with weapons depending on like what's going on at the time for the fight. It's just it's gonna be a lot better. Um, I actually logged in during the Revenant test, and one of I think before Lion's Arch even finished finished loading, yeah. I think I told you this during the test. I got a whisper from somebody that the character name was "We Need Weapon Swap," <laughs> and they whispered and said, yeah. "I think I have the best Revenant name." Yeah, and I was like, "I'm sorry, I didn't do it, but I will <laughs> let them know." Yeah, and we agree. <laughs> yeah, like you can see, you'll have Weapon Swap for the next time you guys get to play in the next iteration, which should also help with that um, the feel of versatility and just like flow in combat, having more options to do when you're like fighting in combat Bring and also more pain. build options because you can mix and match more like dual weapons like mace axe or sword sword which we'll talk about today and other things like hammer and stuff yeah so um, let's talk about that because this is this is shiro week and shiro has a lot of cool things to show off in this legend sure um one so. thing first um yeah. i will be posting after the stream oh, a right. forum post on the revenant sub forums with a list of changes from the feedback and some explanation behind them and it's quite a bit of changes so you guys should make sure to check it out after yeah. the stream if you guys want to talk to roy in depth a little bit more he's going to be... provide more feedback yeah. more back and forth so you guys have been doing a great job on that on yeah. the forums and it's been super super helpful so thank you very much yeah so yeah moving on to the shiro and sword sword um so this setup is as you guys can figure more about the pure damage focus um Yay, dps yeah uh, we tried to really instill that um feeling of like quick attacks like since it's a assassin playstyle from Shiro, like we wanted it to really feel like you're playing an assassin, so have it change up. Like instead of doing as many like big hits, it's a lot of like fast, quick attacks. Um, sword sword reflects that as well, as same as Shiro. And we wanted to keep a lot of the feeling and iconic things that Shiro brought. Like in the blog, we talked about Jade Winds, which we'll show off here in a bit. Um, things like that. Yeah, the Jade Winds Elite was actually something I really got a kick out of when I saw that. <laughs> when we were when we revealed the Shiro Legend on Monday, everybody saw Shiro and people who have been around for a long time and knew Shiro. Um, a couple people immediately said, "Oh my gosh, this Elite needs to be Jade Winds," and I messaged Roy and I was yeah. like, "Roy, look, 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 look what they're saying," <laughs> and yeah. we were just so excited about getting getting to tell you guys you called it. Yep. Yeah. And seeing it talk or hearing it being talked about in blogs, one thing, but once you guys see it in game, it's way different. I can't wait for them to see the it. The effects still. artists and animators did a great job yeah. on all the stuff for Revenant. You guys did good work. All right, well, <laughs> let's take a look. Sure. Um, so, um, jumping into sword skills. Sure. Like how even your characters, like, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, so, sure, um, the auto attack, basically, um, sword is a lot about fast attacks and vuln, um, so as you can see, as I'm uh, auto attacking, the first hit is pretty much just a basic hit that does vuln, the second hit is one that fires out your blade, like you throw out your blade as a projectile, and it's a boomerang, so you throw it out, goes through the target and comes back to you, so it can hit both ways. Um, and the third hit is a uh, rift slash, which we talked about in the blog, where basically you cut like a rift into the enemy, and after a short delay, it'll explode damaging enemies around it. 
So it really favors um, like cleaving and clustered up enemies, mm -hmm. and like in PvP, you definitely don't want to be clustered up around like a sword revenant because he'll be doing a lot more damage. It's gonna hurt. Yeah, um, we wanted to have like quick attacks. Um, a lot of the feeling of what this setup is also uh, like building up your power essentially. Like that's why we have like Voln, so over time you stack up, become more deadly, things like that. We also have some might stacking as well on the weapon set um, to just promote like those quick attacks that ramp up your power over time. Like so, you're a little bit weaker jumping into battle the like right away, but then over time you become way more like powerful as you ramp up. There's that build up if you keep going. Yeah, which works pretty well at delivering that feel of like your assassin, you start attacking, then you can finish off someone quick once they get lower. Yeah. Yeah. You really were having a good time with that. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I love to auto attack Watch what things. I can do. <laughs> This might be the point where we like got to talking. <laughs> yeah, probably got distracted a little bit. This is, this is pretty great. Um, so, okay, the second skill, Precision Strike. Um, I believe we also talked about this one on the blog as well. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you use the skill. Um, it's a ranged attack, medium range. It's 450 range. Um, you basically send out blades. Um, two foes around you, and these cripple. So you can use it as kind of like a added AOE damage in your mm -hmm. rotation. Um, you can use it when you're slightly far away from your enemy to just like catch up with them because it does chill for a second as well, and it's kind of like lower cooldown. It's kind of your like catch up mechanic of like how you can like stick to a target and keep them slow since Revenant doesn't have cripple as well. Um, and just kind of fits the theme of fast attacks and like just throwing out blades, hitting like many targets at once. As you can see, like if I attack the three golems, blades go out to all three. One thing with this is though, it only hits um, a target, one target per blade. So if there's only one enemy there, it'll only throw out one. But if there's three, it'll throw out up to three. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's gonna read the number of targets up to. Yeah. Okay. Now, the um, three skill, since it's coming up and we have a second, I want to mention that if you just think back a while, you have seen this one before. Some of you will have seen this before. You just didn't know what you were seeing at the time. Yeah. So this was a skill we actually showed off in the original trailer for the hot expansion on um, Ritlock. Use this skill and blinked around between some <laughs> enemies attacking them. So you guys didn't even know it, but like you were seeing a Shiro skill yep. back then. Um, so we've been working on it for a while and trying to get the feel right. I got so excited the first time Roy <laughs> showed me this, I was what? <laughs> yeah, um, this actually took a lot of custom work by our programmers and things like that to get really feeling good and feeling right. So this skill basically, um, you step through the mist and you rapidly attack foes like in the area. It basically attacks random foes if there's multiple in the area. Um, you always start and end at the same target, so you can use it for mobility as well. So like if a target's running away, you can use it on them, then you always end at that target, so it'll kind of like chase them down. But it really promotes that feeling of catching someone away from the crowd and if you catch them away then all the hits will hit that one target and they'll play Ow. into one of the offhand sword skills as well. Ow. Oh, that yeah. is not okay. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. it can be a lot of damage. It also stacks up might so it's a way to ramp up your damage as well and hits pretty hard. Um, Ooh. <laughs> the idea is basically like, it's a lot about like positioning, kind of like how Mace acts is like, so you have to be aware of your surroundings, um, like find targets and use it on like the right target at the right time. It's a little bit lower cooldown, so it's made to be used fairly often um, as more of the iconic like feel of um, Sword and Shiro. Um, it's used to be a main DPS skill, essentially. Oh my gosh, that moves. I forgot yeah. about that moose. <laughs> yeah, always got to use a moose. It's a good <laughs> test dummy. Um, so this next skill, we're moving into sword offhand. The first part of this is duelist preparation. Basically, you block attacks for two seconds um, while it's active. So it's kind of like a parrying type thing with your sword. Um, 
If you get attacked while you're blocking, though, you get access to this flip over skill called Shackling Wave, which basically sends out a wave of energy from the mist, um, as you can see in the video. Um, basically, the wave damages and immobilizes targets, so it's a way to stick on your target um, or catch up because it does have a bit longer range. It's about 300 range, so. You can use it for some defense and sticking on your target. Like it works really well to use that and use unrelenting assault right after because they're immobilized and stuck in place. Then you can land all the hits of the sword three on them as well for some good spike. Love it. And, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I kept meaning to ask you to tell me how to summon that moose. You need to. I'll have to show you later. Yeah, show me later because I kind of need that for some defensive stuff. Yeah, I got it from Tyler actually. Tyler always used to summon moose or meese, and then I was like, yeah, that seems like a good target. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so perfectly funny. Yeah. So you can see like swords about like quick attacks, um, some blocks, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, it works really well with like procs as well because things like air sigil or fire sigil, since you are attacking so fast, it makes those procs a lot more reliant. So the sword five skill pairs really well with the sword three. Essentially, it's a melee attack, and as you attack, you shadow step back 600 range and then pull your target with you. Um, the golems snap back, so, but you can see basically um, how it feels um, as you're fighting. Like you basically could be in a crowd like the golems right now and pick someone out of the crowd like World be World, pull them out far enough so that you can get all the hits of the sword three in on that one target. So it's kind of like pick someone out of the crowd, then burst them down kind of feel. It's a cool way to add um, CC, a more unique CC and pull that's still a melee attack, but then gives you some distance as well and kind of separates out targets. I'm viewing it as calling the sick and the weak ones from <laughs> yeah. the herd. <laughs> yeah, basically you pick out the weakest target and finish it off as fast as you can. So we were talking before the show which elite spec I'm kind of excited about and suddenly yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm like, well, that? I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Scared of swords? I'm going to be the sick and weak one that gets <laughs> pulled out of the crowd and just, I'm going to be like lying on the ground in a corner in small pieces. We'll have to work on your PvP skills. We'll we, get you up I to just par. Keep doing, I just keep <laughs> working on it. And then things like this, I see things like this, and it just gets frightening. So <laughs> It's okay. Some of our elite specs are pretty frightening as well. Yes, um, this is one of them. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so what do we want to take a look at next? Because there's more to see. I think. Let's see. Um, um, talking about a little bit of the lore, I think. Yeah, I'm let's. Sure. For those of you who don't know, I know a lot of you guys have been around for a while, and but some of you are kind of going, okay, um, who's the Shiro guy? The very short version is that um, Shiro was the primary villain in the Factions campaign in the first Guild Wars. He also showed up in Nightfall. I know a lot of you are going, but what about Nightfall? He was, he was there too, believe me. I fought him enough times and <laughs> swore at him so many times. Um, but he was primarily the end villain in Factions. Um, he was, the very short version is that he was the Emperor's bodyguard. Um, basically lost his mind, killed the Emperor. Um, you, the player, were the big hero, killed him at the end of the campaign. Um, his dying howl released the magic he had acquired and created what was called the Jade Wind, which is the Revenant Legends elite, yep. yay, <laughs> um, that turned the almost everything to jade that turned the sea to jade. Um, if you want more, check out Wooden Potatoes' lore video on this because it's fantastic. Yeah, he did a really good job on it and yeah. really detailed out a lot of the yeah. lore behind it. Yeah, um, Roy and I were talking about this earlier this week and like Roy starts, he like starts spouting off all of this lore that <laughs> I didn't know he knew and I was just going, wow, I'm so impressed. And Roy was like, I watched Wooden Potatoes' video. Yeah, I knew some so, of it, but yeah. yeah, I've learned a lot more about lore working on this profession than I previously knew. <laughs> yeah, I was like super proud of you because you just, I was like, wow, I didn't know you knew that much. And he was, <laughs> he did his homework, so yeah. that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Thanks. 
Yeah. So um, let's see. So we have some utilities to yeah. go through and some fights to see how it works. Which one yeah. do you want to do next? Let's go into the Shiro skills. All right. You were the boss of this. So. <laughs> All right. Shiro okay. Skills. So um, Shiro, just like Sword, is about quick attacks, the assassin feel, and more of a DPS focused legend. So the heal skill is Enchant Daggers. Um, basically, you use this and you summon up daggers on top of your character, like these Jade Shards. Very similar looking to like Rock Barrier for Elementalist um, as well. As I you attack, this. as you attack, um, these Jade Shards over your shoulder basically fly off and attack the same target that you're attacking. They have 1200 range, so they work with things like Hammer as well. Um, as they hit the target, they siphon life from it a um, pretty hefty amount to be more of an offensive type of heal to help spike it down, along with like the fast attacks um, to get these procs. Basically, you use it like can use it before a fight for some added damage or like when you're low and still help finish off enemies, um, just to get more of an offensive heal feeling to fit the feeling of this offensive, quick attacking assassin. So it's more hits that can like proc things like sigils and whatnot as well. And again, I know we mentioned it earlier, but I love the look of this one. The <laughs> effects, they've done such a good job with this. I'm yeah. always so our proud of it. Our effects artists are amazing yeah. and really went over the top, especially with Revenant and the new Elite specs, things like that. They have. It's been really good. So this next skill, um, Reposting Shadows. Um, I know you guys talked about we didn't really use Shiro's skill names um, in the blog, but this is actually one of them. Um, it's a bit different though. Basically, you use it, it's a stun breaker, and you evade backwards for um, a short distance and remove impairing condies and regain some endurance. So it's kind of like you see a big attack coming, you can use it to get out of the fight, um, and then that leads into the next skill, actually, which is being shown off as well, which we talked about in the blog. Phase traversal, which you basically step through the miss to the enemy um, and then gain two stacks of unblockable. So it's you blink to them, basically, and get your next two attacks basically can't be stopped um, to get that offensive, like pushing through defense feel. And these work really well together because you could see a big attack incoming and use reposting shadows to dodge the attack, nice. then immediately go back in with phase traversal and have that increased offense. So it has that, a lot of mobility and like feel like moving around the battlefield, blinking in, and it works like the Sword 5, you pick someone out of the crowd. Um, has a lot of like pulling targets, things like that. Right. We wanted that mobility feel. Um, yeah, like a complaint I saw on the forums was some of the other legends don't have enough mobility, but we really want to save that kind of real feel for um, Shiro since he's like a fast attacking, mm -hmm. quick assassin, yeah. like well, you see in the mobility. factions trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the next skill we're going to talk about actually is uh, another skill name as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark just so. told us there's still like a minute left of this. <laughs> so apparently we'll watch. So it moving turns around out Roy bit. likes to play the Revenant. It's weird, <laughs> but yeah. he likes this class. Yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. And the internal version um, as well is like, as you guys will see on the post, uh, post that I make after this. Um, there's been a lot of changes to adjust like the feel as well, and we really think it should be a better experience for you guys um, for the next iteration that you get to play. I do want to point out um, that I did this deliberately. I left, I closed the window, I just minimized this and tabbed it out of it so I wouldn't be completely distracting myself, <laughs> but I deliberately left um, Twitch chat open so yeah. I could just see what people did when we uncovered weapon swap <laughs> yeah. and chat did exploded. They go ham? It was yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> so it was super gratifying when we showed yeah. off weapon swap. So <laughs> all right. Let's see what okay, we have. Okay, here. so here the next skill, impossible odds, another throwback from Hey, Gilders I know that one. one. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. I hope it, I hope it's less painful here. It's probably not less painful. I hope it's it's less just painful as when I'm crazy. Using it. <laughs> um so this is the upkeep skill of Shiro, so that means like you can use it anytime. It costs a little bit of energy to use initially, but then it costs your energy regen um 
over time. So you basically go in negative five regen. So you're losing energy while it's active. Okay, this and, is painful. This is that painful thing I was talking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it basically gives you pulsing quickness and super speed while it's active, which is crazy, I know, but it really provides that assassin feel of like, you basically expend your energy for these fast attacks for moments where you can go in and really burst down a target and things like that. Like you pick a target out of the crowd, say with sword five, like calling the weak, <laughs> um, it's, maybe it's poor really Ruby. A thing. No, you <laughs> and then, me alone. <laughs> and then use that impossible odds. Then you can use things like sword three to have that happen like twice as fast because of quickness. And also it helps you stick on targets with super speed as well. But it's something you want to toggle and be careful of how much energy you're using since your energy drains really fast and your weapon skills also use it. So it's kind of like managing how often you want to use it. Generally, it's more for like those burst scenarios and things like that and try and finish off targets. But it's his high like DPS kind of cooldown thing. I'm finding that energy management is a huge thing with the revenue. You really have to measure whether yeah. or not the cost of some of these things is worth it. Yeah, especially adding weapon swap as well, because that just gives you another set of cooldowns to use that also has energy. So it's really going to be more about, like, how do I manage my energy? Do I, Since they have lower cooldowns and can use so many things, it's more like, mm -hmm. what do I use like in this moment on the battlefield? Right. If you just start banging on anything that's <laughs> not on cooldown at the moment, it's going to suck really quickly. Yeah. So you it's something to manage and we'll definitely take more time as you guys play the revenant to like master and it'll also be some back and forth of like tweaking the numbers to make sure they all feel good yeah so now we have um the elite jade winds as you can see Yay. you channel basically this jade wind and um release the jade winds onto your foes um, essentially stunning them, kind of like Petrify from Basilisk Venom. Um, it turns them to Jade, stunning them for a short duration. Um, it's about like three seconds, it's actually like pretty long, um, costs a lot of energy. It it's supposed so to great. feel really impactful. They have an awesome material effect to play that turns foes into this glossy Jade, and we wanted to deliver that cool feel moment like when you saw in the factions trailer of shiro going down and like turning everything to jade so like this epic moment that the revenant is using the skill still not as long as the jade sea <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we were talking about making it map wide that's right we talked about that like one person gets to use it and then yeah. it's 200 whoever gets there years, first <laughs> just turns everything into jade everybody but else you don't get to use it sorry probably a bit overpowered <laughs> We need some balance. Yeah. So um, it also works well with impossible odds because you can use the quickness if you have enough energy, that is, um, to basically help you get off even faster. But that basically would deplete your energy, essentially using those two things back to back. There's that counting the cost again. Yeah. So here we have um, some random fight videos that I was playing with the Revenant. So you can kind of see it in action fighting with weapon swap and shiro um things like that how i use like sword and hammer so that i have the melee like yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah rainbow unicorn we made him do it you guys he did not want to <laughs> <laughs> no i really want to <laughs> i love the trolley finishers um it's so funny yeah as you can see it's really getting off like quick attacks, moving in and out from a fight, um, finishing off your enemy quickly, things like that. Um, just to give you a good sense of like how it kind of like plays in combat along with weapon swap. Like I was saying with hammer, it allows me to poke or like hit people from range. Um, and with that power damage, we upped hammer damage very significantly, which you'll see in the form post as well to make it feel more satisfying. Did it feel more satisfying combined with the Rainbow Unicorn finisher? Yeah, I yeah. think that added a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just make all Revenants only have that finisher. Automatically, yeah. you just automatically get that, and it's the only one you can use. Also, your hammer is a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a cool hammer. That would be a great hammer. <laughs> Shiro would be super mad. 
Yeah, like, so you see in the video, um, I'll use my heel offensively in the beginning, like, just there. Um, basically, to have it up, I use it to add the added nice. damage in the beginning and to keep me more, like, topped off in the beginning since it will proc and, like, constantly heal me um, and help burst them down. Or you can do things like starting with Jade Winds, like I just did, to basically control your target and then get in some burst and then finish them off. Um, there's a lot of traits we'll go over shortly too as well. Um, the Devastation line is a lot more focused about damage, um, Vuln, and things like Lifesteal and Might as well. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, opening with hammer um, for the CC, then get to swap to sword for some more damage, and then going into Shiro, try using that unrelenting assault for some burst and stacking up Vuln. I was a bit off my game <laughs> when doing this, so it was a little bit tough. I don't think it's that you were off your game. I was just sitting here thinking, <laughs> we have to quit making you guys attack this particular creature. <laughs> we keep bringing devs in here for recording sessions and making them attack this particular yeah. guy. They, I think I this happens kill him. to all of them. Yeah. Everybody's like, ow, <laughs> ow, ow. And then they apologize, but I'm starting to see a pattern, so I'm really yeah. sorry. I think well, at this least is my fault. I killed him and rallied. You did rally, <laughs> but I'm sorry. It's okay. So, I forgive you. It didn't only <laughs> happen to you, so. That's good to know. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it's not you. It's us. <laughs> so, um, want to move on to traits? Yeah, okay. totally. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay, so right. here on the top line is the devastation line, which goes along with sword and shiro. Um, this is way more focused about like raw DPS, um, kind of like strength line for warriors or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go over the minor traits first. The first one, Mutilate Defenses, is chance on hit to apply Vuln. So this works really well with the fast attacks of Sword because you get these procs a lot more often. Um, and Sword itself stacks up Vuln, so you really ramp up the damage really quickly. Um, this next one is you deal increased damage to targets with Vuln. So since you apply Vuln as well, you get that increased damage modifier to targets that have Vuln on them to increase your output and spike. Then the final minor trait is striking foes that have vulnerability. You siphon life from them. Um, small amount, kind of like the Necro life siphon to help add some damage and sustain to you as well, so like over time as you're fighting, since you have so much full and you're siphoning this life for each of the like hits that you um, do on the target, and since you're attacking so rapidly, um, for things like the auto attack, since you have the projectile that goes out and comes back, or the delayed blast, things like that, um, really adds up over time. So moving on to the depth traits, we have Assassin's Presence which is a trait kind of like spotter or empower, things like that, where basically you increase ferocity of nearby allies around you by 150. So it's a good way to add like group support, like mm -hmm. more stats to help support your party that you're playing with. Um, so the next trait is rapid lacerations. It's your sword trait. Um, basically, as you attack, you can have a sword in your main hand or offhand, and it'll work. As you attack, um, you get a stack of this buff, which is basically 2% quickness, and it stacks up to 5. So I'm just like, picturing filleting your enemy. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes for some really fast attacks. So basically, this stacks yes. up, and you get pretty quickly, and you get 10% attack speed. And it combos really well with impossible odds. So you have like quickness on top of that. So you get out some real crazy fast attacks. I love it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, this next one. Um, malicious reprisal. Um, when one of your attacks is blocked, your next attack will be unblockable. You get two stacks of the unblockable, kind of like your utility as well. So if you're fighting PvP and a guardian uses shelter and your first attack gets blocked, then your next two will be unblockable. So you can do things like um, CC them out of it or just come as well with things like Jade Winds. Um, yeah. So moving on to Master Traits. 
This one's pretty fun because it's pretty thematic to Shiro, especially from the Factions trailer. Um, increases down damage, and when you go down, you basically use Jade Winds. So like as your character's down, you release Jade Winds, stunning people around you, turning them into Jade. So you get that awesome moment Gosh. like in the Factions yep. trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this next one, uh, as we talked about stacking up damage, um, when you use Assassin's Stance skill, you get two stacks of might for a pretty decent duration. Um, basically, it's made so you're using these skills like back to back and ramping up your damage over time, gaining these might stacks along with like Sword 3 and the Vuln as well. And this next one is um, increasing ferocity when you're dual wielding. So that's either sword sword or like mace axe or any combination of the one handers. Love it. For grandmasters, we have an executioner style trait. Um, basically, you get 20% damage increased when the target's below 50% health. Mm -hmm. So finishing off enemies, like you pick them out of the crowd, burst them down and just helps you finish them off quickly. So you probably want to pick someone out who's lower so that you can burst down. This next one is pretty crazy. Um, basically, since we changed the ability to a stacking buff, um, most CC, or all CCs right now just remove one stack of stability and get blocked by it. But this trait makes it so you remove an additional stack of stability. Oh, no. So if the target only has one stack of stability and you use a CC with this trait, it'll remove that stack and go through and still CC them. Or if they have multiple stacks, it'll remove two stacks of stability for each CC that you do. People are going to be flying off cliffs <laughs> right and left. Just yeah. So you can really tear everywhere. through. It's made like this line's about like tearing through defenses of people essentially and just like powering through your foes. And then this final Grandmaster trait. Um, when you attack from the side or behind from your foe, you siphon life from that target. So kind of like that um, backstabbing feel of like assassins like ambushing someone and um, lifesteal we felt like fit Shiro pretty well, adds a good amount of like added damage procs um, and survivability if you want to go more of that option instead of like um, the executioner, executioner style trait. <laughs> And that's about it for I traits. Am having a harder and harder time deciding what to play when I'm part of Thorn's <laughs> lunches. I like all of them. So. Yeah, we've been going a little bit crazy with some of the things, um, but all of the things are super fun. <laughs> yeah, we're aiming to make things really fun. Like we want to get the feel right. That's why Revenant might have been like a little bit weaker during the mm -hmm. test because we really want to get the skills in the right direction and damage numbers and things like that are always able to be like raised pretty easily. Like after mm -hmm. we get the feel that we want for the skills. Yeah, but getting that getting that feel in there and then having you guys come in and play around with it and let us know what you thought about all of the balance issues was really was yeah. really really helpful. Yeah. So and we will have all of you come in pretty soon and take another look at it and see what you think and yeah. then Roy and his team can come in and tweak yeah. it some more. Yeah, it should be hopefully a bit of a better experience and just flow playing the profession and mm -hmm. um, hopefully it gives you guys a different impression with the retuning that we did um, in general, which you guys will see after this when I make the forum post. Yeah, so that's a thing that you guys can do and just go into the forums, talk to Roy in depth a little bit more. Um, you know what, there was something, one more thing that I was going to do at the beginning and I totally yeah. forgot um, because you and I both got a tweet <laughs> from, from a Guild Wars 2 player whose birthday it is today and we were going to tell I hope I'm not like totally mangling this, and it's like some fancy like French pronunciation. But um, Black Arps, yeah, I hope that's happy right. Birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> Asked us to tell him happy birthday on the show. So, happy birthday, and I hope the rest of it's really really great. Um, the next thing that we have up, because we are totally done talking about the Revenant for today on for the show, now, yeah. not on the forums. <laughs> Um, unless you have any other surprises to pull out. No, that's about if it. If you the do, other, I'm going to be as surprised as y'all are. Other surprises for details, you have to check the form post for the changes. Some of them are pretty drastic, so you'll probably want to check them out. Yay. 
Um, okay then, so the next thing that we have up is a recording from Josh and I. Uh, Josh Davis has been super busy and he's really busy right now, but he wants to talk a little bit about something that he's been working on. So we're going to take a look at that right now. Welcome back, Josh. Thank you, Ruby. You are welcome. <laughs> this is weird. I actually right? don't know if we've ever been on at the same time before. You know, we could pretend it's like a split screen thing and we're really not in the same room and Mark is like editing us We've together. actually recorded this at separate times. We're not even in the same room together. Yeah, Mark is doing some amazing editing yeah, right really now. Top notch. Super impressed. Yeah, I love that movie. It was great. <sighs> Thank you for you asking. My girlfriend's great. <laughs> <laughs> the editing just got really bad. It did, it did. Mark okay. dropped the ball. So you are here to talk to us about Gollum Rush a little bit. I am indeed. Because you made it. I did. Um, it's pretty exciting. I'm really excited to see this go out there. You seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> My maximum hype level is always like a six of Yeah, this uh, is as good as it 10. gets. This is like cartwheels for everybody else. It is. It is. Um, All right, so why don't you give us the overview about what it's about? All right, so uh, we did a special event uh, in December of last year called Sneak Attack, and uh, it was cool because it altered gameplay for like a week in Warbus' mm -hmm. World. So people got to experience something new. Um, really kind of the motive there was testing something out in Warbus' World that we were potentially thinking about implementing long term. Right. Um, so in that event, we removed white swords on objectives that were under uh, attack, and we also uh, added points per kill. So uh, that kind of falls into the bucket of events that were specifically for testing things, right? Well, we've got another bucket now. Yay. And uh, this is probably going to come as a comfort to a lot of you, but this bucket is going to be events that are not meant to test things, but are just to kind of spice up gameplay or change the way that you interact with Warbus' World for a week. So don't worry. We're not actually thinking about making golems free for everyone for, for forever. It's just a thing we're doing for a it's week okay. to kind of spice things up. A uh, little Pacific Rim action should be pretty fun. Nice. Um, so I'll, I'll go over the event and kind of explain how it works. So um, Siege Golems, um, that's going to be Alpha Golems and Omega Golems, will be free to construct for the, uh, for the week of the event, which actually should be active now, um, assuming that this is airing uh, at the right time. We will, we will air this <laughs> it at should the right be, It should be up for an hour by this time. Um, so you'll still need to buy blueprints from the uh, you know, with badges or from the auction house or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to pay for those. But once you try to construct them, they don't cost supply. So feasibly, everyone should be able to construct a golem and run around in a uh, mechanized suit of armor. Chainswords? No chainswords. If you're going to go to the Pacific Rim place, <laughs> I want uh, a chainsword. Unfortunately, sword. didn't have time to get the chainswords. You let me down. I'm sorry. Um, so during the, uh, the spend of the event, um, golems are free, and they also are supercharged. So nice. they run at 100% um, increased movement speed, which is, I think, close to what a player runs with uh, when they have swiftness. Like, very fast. Like, they're zooming across the map. For a golem, it's ridiculous. Yes, it is. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and they also do 100% additional damage to uh, players and to other siege. So wow. um, if you get punched by one, it's going to hurt. But, you know, they're a bit slower. So I, I fully expect players to do, like, this weird, like, Terminator, like, <laughs> it's us against the machines. We've got right. a scheme on how we take them out. Uh, should be interesting. Um, and then one thing that we actually are testing for this event to come back long term, which, not to scare anyone, is uh, points per kill. So every time that you kill an enemy player on, on an enemy realm, you get one point towards your to uh, total world score. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something we're thinking about uh, implementing long term. We figured turning it on with the special event would be a good time for it. Um, definitely interested in hearing feedback on whether or not uh, players like to see it stay long term. I think it's pretty cool. It kind of gives uh, additional meaning behind fights. Like you kill a player, now you're contributing to your overall uh, overall world position, right? Yeah. So I think it's kind of cool. So the feedback is super important. After hearing from Roy a little while ago, you guys know that we are listening to your feedback. So we really do want to hear from you yep. and hear what you think so we can kind of tweak that. Yep. Um, and the last thing I got with the event is, um, so we like the idea of special events um, and the kind of the two different ways that we're doing them with testing out changes long term. Mm -hmm or uh, kind of just changing the way that you play World vs. World for a week. Um, so I've already seen some interaction on the forums, players suggesting new special events, um, and these have been really small ones, like changing one really small thing to really massive events that would take a lot of development time or whatever. Um, but we're definitely interested in hearing more of these things. Um, these events in general don't really take that much development time from us, like we're still chugging away on features that we're working on. Um, there's not a lot of, it doesn't take much effort, but like yeah. it has a lot of benefit from us. So. Um, yeah. So, like this one in particular, we were kind of talking about development time. You mentioned that. How much? We've got a lot going on with Heart of Thorns. So, how much development time did this take away? Uh, I would say zero. Um, so, uh, <laughs> and the <laughs> exactly reason I would say zero. that. Why is that? Uh, well, because I work on the marketing team, and I actually don't work on features for the expansion. But um, I, am, I implemented this event, so it's just something we're adding on top of whatever we're working on for Heart of Thorns. Kind of a little added bonus to. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, keep players engaged and maybe try something new out for a week. So this was just a little extra thing that Josh did, kind of working late? Yeah. Just to yeah, it's pretty fun. Add um, something in. Yeah, and uh, like I said, um, we're definitely looking, uh, looking for more ideas on what we can do in the future, so if we can get some feedback on the forums from you guys, uh, whether you'd like to see something with other Siege or really anything you guys would like to see, and we'll kind of discuss how um, hard it is to implement, and maybe we'll bring it in the future. So talk to us. Yes, please. please. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Ruby. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks. Welcome back. Um, so that was our competitive segment this week. I hope he was watching this, and I hope he really appreciates my little gift from Tirza. Um, Hugh is in Las Vegas this week, competing in EVO 2015. So we just want to take a second and wish him good luck from all of us here at ArenaNet, and hope he does really, really well. Our competitive segment was with Josh, so we are closing up this week, and we will see you back next week. Thank you. Good luck, Hugh, and we will see you guys next Friday. Bye. Critics have spoken. Best channel 2015, says TV Guy. They're saying he's the voice of a generation. So if you like Guild Wars 2 and, I don't know, ponies, chocolate, and some other games, then go check out World of Enders. <laughs>